Welcome all of you chirpers out there. My name is Tori and I want to thank you for joining us for yet another virtual bird walk with Chirp. So if you're not aware, we've been hosting these events for three years. Well, this is our third year. So we've been doing virtual events for one year. We've been doing in-person bird walks for about two years. And now here we are starting our 2021 season. So we're so glad that you could make it and be here with us. So go ahead and post in the chat how you heard about this event and also where you are joining us from. Now, as you see, this is footage from our most recent in-person bird walk up Mill Creek Road. And as you're seeing, we had so much fun. We had a lot of people join, of us, join us and we want to take you back there virtually right now because ultimately our goal at Chirp Nature Center is to get you connected to nature through birding any way we can, no matter where you are. So before we begin our walk and we're going to get started, I want to introduce you to our bird guide for today. His name is Randy Putz and in 2018, Randy created Chirp Nature Center with his lovely wife, Beth. You'll see a picture of them both right there. He is an outdoors man. So when he's not helping run the city or selling seed, you can find Randy in the mountains. There's a little fun fact. He's a true mountaineer. He's climbed Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, Mount Whitney, and our local San Gregorio Mountain, which is the highest point in Southern California, 13 times. So pretty impressive. Not only does he talk the talk, but he climbs the mountains. Hmm. He also is a nature enthusiast, and he has been passionate about connecting people to nature using birds as inspiration. So it looks like we're all set and ready to go. Let's go ahead and get started on our bird walk. Good morning, Tori. We were on our way up to Metcalf Meadow, but we had a little issue. The road is closed. I'm here at the beginning of Forest Service Road 2 and 10 at the top of Mill Creek Road on our way up to Metcalf Meadow, but turns out that the road's closed for prescribed burns that they're doing up by Bluff Lake. So being the flexible birders that we are, we're going to instead walk up 2N10 along Metcalf Creek, which starts up at Metcalf Meadow where we had planned to go originally. All right, well, let's make sure we have all of our gear ready to go. And I, of course, am prepared this morning with my bird watching essentials, my trusty Zeiss binoculars, my Peterson's Field Guide, Western Edition, and my chirp checklist for birds in the Big Bear Valley. I'm ready, I hope you are, let's go. And as the adventure begins, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you where we're headed today. So we are going to be headed to Mill Creek Road, and it leads you up to Metcalf Meadow. It is about a 15 minute drive, and the good news is that although it was closed when we were recording, it is now open for public views, so you can go there whenever you like. Now, Mill Creek Road is a prime location for birding, and this is because you always want to be near water. So the path winds right beside the creek, which is great. And since it's been a while since we've been birding together, I wanted to remind you of a few things. You are a part of our bird identifying team today, which means as Randy gives clues to the birds, it's your job to post their name in the chat before Randy reveals them. And I challenge you to guess as many as you can. And don't worry if you can't get them correct because honestly, this is just for fun. And the more that you practice, the better you will become at identifying birds. So as we head up Mill Creek, it looks like we've already spotted a bird. Can you identify this one? Here we are in a coniferous forest, uh, one filled with pine trees, and there's a particular bird that we would expect to see here. It's about five inches long. It's got a uh, grayish blue back. It's got a black cap that only goes part way down its head, not all the way down to its eyes like some of its cousins. It's got a white face, a long narrow bill, a short tail. It makes sort of a nasal yammering. And what's especially distinctive about this bird is you will watch them crawl along the trunks of trees in all directions, almost defying gravity. They'll go up, they'll go down, they'll go all over the place. And this bird has the unique ability to take a nut and wedge it into the bark of a tree and then use its 
pointy little bill to peck at it and pull the seed out of the nut. It sort of hatches the nut, and that's where this bird gets its name. It's the white-breasted nuthatch. Congratulations if you just identified your first bird. And I hope I reminded you, but make sure you post it in the chat so that other people can learn about this bird as well. So the interesting thing about this bird is that it is a defensive dancer. So as you can see in the video below, I love doing that. As you can see in the video below, it's actually defending its territory from chipmunks and squirrels, which is why it's spreading its wings and kind of, you know, dancing around. Another interesting thing about this bird is that it has very unique feet that allow it to climb up and down and side to side, as Randy mentioned. There is a big toe that is on the, it's like a backwards big toe, it faces backwards, and then it has three toes or claws that face forward, which help it cling to the trees. It also is a little bird, but do not be misled, it has a very loud voice, as Randy mentioned. It's kind of a yammering sound that sounds like this. And it's honestly impressive to spot a bird so quickly. And whether you're a bird walking pro or there's some tricks that are extremely helpful. So whether you're a beginner or you're a bird walking pro, we have some tips for you that are going to help you identify birds. So if you're curious what they are, I'm going to have Randy fill you in. Here are a few things I want to keep in mind when I'm doing my bird watching. I find this helpful and you might find it helpful too. First thing is... When I'm trying to look for birds, I want to use what I call lazy eyes or owl eyes, where I simply unfocus and stare off into the distance. And by doing this, I'm activating the receptors in my eyes that notice movement. Our eyes are designed to notice movement and that technique of soft focusing and staring off to the distance makes it easier to see that movement. Then, once I have identified a bird, I want to pay attention to where I'm at. Am I beside a creek, in a forest, by a lake, in an open field? Because the habitat is going to have a big influence on the birds that I'm identifying. All right, so lazy eyes and an awareness of your surroundings have helped us spot yet another bird. Do you know its name? As I pay attention to habitat, if I'm looking on the ground in some of the denser, thicker thickets um, in a coniferous forest like this, I'm uh, also looking for a bird that's going to have um, splotches, brownish splotches on the front and on its uh, flanks, bigger splotches. It's also going to have rust and gray in its head. Uh, this is a larger uh, sparrow and it will uh, be foraging for seeds and insects. Uh, this is a well-traveled sparrow. It has been found uh, in places like Iceland and Denmark and Italy and here in the US. Uh, it's quite a world traveler. It's also an old bird. They have found 11,000-year-old fossils uh, here in Southern California in the La Brea tar pits. They've also found old fossils like that all the way in Pennsylvania. And this would be a fox sparrow. All right, checking in, how'd you do? This is a fox sparrow, and I actually saw my first fox sparrow on a bird walk I did during the Global Big Day, which was May 8th. And something that I thought was really interesting is there's actually four subspecies of fox sparrows, and they have various attributes such as coloring or features. So some of these subspecies have different color patterns, including red, slate and kind of a sooty feather pattern and then they also have a thick bill another subspecies would be a thick billed fox sparrow which i actually saw for my first time that was pretty cool also as randy mentioned these birds are found all over the world and so scientists believe that the way that they were able to travel so far is they would actually land on ships in different parts of the ocean as they were making their transatlantic journey in order to get from different areas of the world to the next pretty smart. They also have a beautiful, sweet whistling song, and you can hear them from the scrub bush or in coniferous forests. It 
So well done spotting this little guy. But what other clues can we use when we're identifying birds? I want to watch the behavior of the bird. Is it on the ground feeding? Is it up in a bush or a tree? Is it soaring overhead? What is the behavior of that bird? Again, important clues when I'm trying to identify the bird. Then I'm going to pay attention to the size of the bird. Is it small like a finch or a sparrow? Is it more medium sized or larger like a robin or bigger like uh, a crow or a raven? Or is it something especially large uh, like a bald eagle, um, a big bird? Those clues are all important before we even get to what are the colors and the markings of the bird. That would be one of the last things that I would consider when I'm trying to identify a, the bird. The other thing to keep in mind with all of this is that we often will hear the bird before we'll see the bird. And as you become a better birder, you will get more skillful at identifying the sounds. But in the beginning, just hearing them will help you find them and then zoom in with your binoculars to figure out what it is. All right, so with these identification clues in mind, we have just spotted a little yellow bird. And let's see if you can identify it before Randy does. There is a particular kind of bird, a small vocal insectivore, that we will see in this area around Metcalf Creek. Uh, we'll often see them in the willows, like I have behind me. And I have Metcalf Creek just over the side here to me. And one of these birds is uh, brighter yellow on the front, brighter yellow on the head, which turns more to a olivish yellow. They're small, um, maybe just four inches long, like half the size of a pencil. And they have a distinctive black cap on the top, uh, which looks like a bad toupee. And this particular bird is a Wilson's warbler, and they love the willows. So lots of W's for you there, but this bird is a Wilson's warbler, small, beautiful, yellow, olivish insectivore that loves to eat bugs. So this is the first time I've ever seen this little beauty, but it definitely stands out against the darker brush. And as mentioned, this is the smallest warbler that's in the U.S. They also breed in mountains, northern forests, but they will pass through every state in the lower 48 during migration. That was pretty impressive. Males will also sing from low perches, so you can be on the lookout for them, and they have a very bright sounding song to match their bright feathers. This is honestly such a stunning bird, and whenever I see such bright birds around the Big Bear Mountains, it always makes me curious why we find such a variety of wild birds in this area. I just stepped off for a second off the Forest Service Road because I wanted to make a point about why we're here and why we like this area, and it's because of the water. This is Metcalf Creek that starts up in Metcalf Meadow and flows all the way down to Metcalf Bay in the lake, but why we care about it this morning is because the water brings the birds and it makes for a great birding environment. And when you're in an arid area, especially like these San Bernardino Mountains, the water makes for good birding. Yes, it's very true. Water definitely attracts different birds. So as you'll notice, pretty much all of our bird walks are near some source of water. Speaking of birds, it looks like we have found another one in the brush. As we walk along more willows, another small vocal insectivore that we might see here has a dark hood, is yellowish olive in color. Again, small pointy bill, short tail. But this one also has white crescents above and below its eyes. And this would be a McGilvery's warbler, another warbler in the willows. 
So my mom has told me that white eyeliner was a trend in the 60s, but I guess this warbler eye markings are always in style and it's fashionable feathers no no bounds because the McGilvery warbler is actually found all over it's very widespread nesting and it nests near sea level to as high as 10,000 feet in elevation also I got to see one of these during the global big day bird count in Metcalf Meadow our team leader actually played the song of a McGilvery's warbler which then encouraged males of the so it played the song on his phone and then encouraged live McGilvery Warblers to come and defend their territory. So that's how we got to see one. I thought it was super clever and I really enjoyed getting to see that. So thanks, Matthew. <laughs> also, you can listen to their song. It's usually they'll sing in the early morning during spring and in the beginning of summer. So you'll probably hear them right now. And it sounds like this. So we hope that, I hope, and all of Chirp hopes that we're, you're enjoying a little bit of this fresh virtual air with us here at Chirp Nature Center. And in fact, if you like joining us on these virtual bird walks, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on all the social media, and sign up for our newsletter at chirpforbirds.com. Well, as Randy said, subscribing to our newsletter is easy. You can always come into our store or you can visit us online. So, oh, it looks like Randy has just spotted something in the trees and I have full faith that you can identify this bird. So I am seeing, and frankly have been hearing all morning, small gray bird, has a black cap, black stripe through the eye, black beard, it has a very iconic sound that you hear up here all the time. This bird winters up here in the San Bernardino Mountains, and it's especially well adapted for harsh winters. Its circulation is such that it slows to keep it from overly cooling itself when the temperatures drop. And it will actually even go into a stupor where it will go unconscious when the temperatures get really low, and then as things warm up, it will come back to life. This bird is a cavity nester. We will see it at feeders. You'll see it uh, eating at the ground. You'll see it in the trees. And this is one of our favorites, a mountain chickadee. So this is a classic bird that's found in the Big Bear Mountains. And Interestingly enough, this half ounce ball of energy must eat 10 calories a day to survive. And to put that in perspective, that's equivalent to a 200 pound person eating 64,000 calories a day. Imagine how many pints of ice cream that is. Mountain chickadees are also found around the mountains and they will readily come to nest boxes and they love sunflower seeds. So keep that in mind if you want to attract a few of these little beauties to your backyard. And whenever my dad hears the song of the mountain chickadee, he always says, this is how he knows that spring is here. And this is what it sounds like. <laughs> and another sign of spring would be the bright blue skies and the fresh mountain air. And although we seem rather isolated from civilization right now, this road was actually essential to early big barians. As we continue to walk up this Forest Service Road, also known as Mill Creek Road, it's interesting to note that this was one of the original ways into the Big Bear Valley. It used to be a toll road that came up from Redlands and people would come up by horseback or in their early automobiles and take this road up over the mountains into what then was called Pine Knot Village before it became Big Bear Lake. See, honestly, there's just something about history of Big Bear that makes me appreciate it even more. Almost as I will appreciate you helping me identify this next bird. This particular bird has a rusty cinnamon breast. It has bluish gray on the back. It has a dark cap that only goes a little bit down its head, a white stripe above the eye, and then a darker stripe 
through the eye. This bird will also travel up and down, defying gravity, the uh, trunks uh, of trees. And it also has an interesting trait where it will gather resin and plaster the resin around the entrance of its nest hole to keep out predators and other undesirables. And this would be a red-breasted nuthatch. Now, like its cousin, the white-breasted nuthatch, the red-breasted nuthatch will keep its tail propped up as it hops around the tree trunks. And it's interesting because this behavior is actually different than woodpeckers who will use their tail to prop them up. So they'll actually place their tail against the bark, whereas these birds will hop around with their tail kind of propped up. You can also watch for their short and bouncy flight pattern. That's one way to help identify these birds as they flit between the trees. And they also have a very distinct yak yak call. It, it's, I've heard of it being described as tiny horns that you can hear being honked from the tops of trees. I mean, it makes sense that Randy was taking a little rest. I mean, we've been hiking for quite some time, but we have one more bird that is we're on the lookout for before we turn around. And fortunately, Randy knows exactly where we are because to be honest, I'm a little lost. As we continue along Mill Creek Road that we're on now, it's a couple few miles from the locked gate where we started up to Metcalf Meadow, where we had originally intended uh, to go. But the road's not especially steep, and it's a good dirt road for passenger vehicles. If you go easy, you don't need four-wheel drive. But it also offers some beautiful vistas of the lake. Yep, this is honestly one thing that I love about the mountains is that no matter where you are, there's always something beautiful to see or some beautiful view to enjoy. Like our final bird for today. Can you help me name it? So we just first heard through its distinctive call and then saw a white-breasted nuthatch in the tree uh, up there. And another bird that we just saw feeding on the ground, has a uh, darker body color, a dark hood, and when it flies away, you see two white stripes on the sides of its tail, which will give you another clue, and that would be a dark-eyed junco. There you go. Getting to see these birds up close, it makes sense where their name comes from. And you can actually find them foraging around the ground looking for seeds. We saw a ton of them as we were on our walk. <laughs> They're also one of the most common birds in North America. They have a population of over 630 million, ranging from Alaska to Mexico and California to New York City. You can listen for their musical trill. It's about seven to 23 notes long and it lasts only about two seconds, but they'll constantly sing it. Well done, Well, We really did get to see a variety of birds today, and I hope that you posted them in the chat or thumbed through your field guide to see if you could figure them out. And there are even more opportunities for you to engage your bird brain with Chirp Nature Center. So we've walked up maybe a mile up Mill Creek Road. We've turned around. We're heading back to the gate where we parked. And we've seen a lot of common birds, our stellar jays, mountain chickadees, dark-eyed juncos, white-breasted nuthatches, and we've talked about those in detail um, in previous walks. We'll talk about them more in the future. And you can join us in person on these walks. First Saturday of every month, May through October, we meet at Chirp Nature Center in the village at 8 a.m. Or you can join us virtually, like you are now, the second Wednesday of every month from May through October at 5 p.m. 
And don't forget, we also have our upcoming bird talk. And now that's going to happen on May 15th. So this Saturday, we're going to be talking all about the Big Bear Bald Eagles with a bald eagle specialist from Big Bear. So hope to see you there at 10 a.m. right here. You found us here and you can find us again on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> and be sure to join us whenever you want. Like we said, all information is on chirpforbirds.com or you can come to Chirp Nature Center. And now it is your time to claim your prize. So the fun thing about these virtual events is that we want to test your bird brain and help you gain some bird knowledge. So you can go to chirpforbirds.com slash quiz and take a little quiz to be entered in to win a grand prize. Now the grand prize that we're giving out for this virtual event will be a Sibley Field Diary. And for all of those who participated and take the quiz, as a little thank you from us at Chirp Nature Center to you, we will be mailing you a participation prize which is going to be this fantastic little sticker. And now this is a bird watcher sticker from the Global Big Day, but you've just proved it. You can bird from wherever you want, whenever you want. But don't forget, you only have 24 hours to complete this quiz. So we're gonna post the link to the quiz in the chat. It's a direct link. You can just click on it and go there. You can also go, like we said, chirpforbirds.com slash quiz and go ahead and take the quiz that way. Well. It looks like Randy has returned back to the trailhead, so let's go ahead and wish him a farewell. We're back at the bottom of 2 and 10 at the locked gate. I want to thank you for joining us on our bird walk, a nice little stroll up into the forest. I hope you'll come and visit us at Chirp Nature Center in Big Bear Lakes Village. Until then, until next time, stay well, stay healthy, and stay connected to nature. Well, there you have it. You've just completed the first virtual bird walk of the 2021 season. We hope to see you again soon, whether it be in person or online. As Randy mentioned, you can follow us on various social medias, as well as come in, give us a call or email us. You can visit us at the village, village, there you go, call us, or email us at help at chirpforbirds.com. So before you fly away, Make sure that you check the chat for links to the quiz, which you're definitely going to want to take. And we're also going to give you the eBird checklist of the birds that we saw on our in-person bird walk, which was on the first. So again, go ahead and check those out. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tori, and I'm so grateful that I got to be with you today. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, and we can't wait to see you again very soon. <laughs>